but I was able to trade up to nine with Chicago, cost a ton, and I was able to do it. So, so I kind of did this one, putting more in the eggs of the basket of the future me problems. Um, but it was our 28th pick this year, first, second, and third round next year. Maybe, maybe this, maybe both the second rounders. Not positive, but just kind of looking at it from that cost perspective, this is probably my least favorite scenario. And to be very clear, if we're on draft night and I see the Bills move into the top 10 and they're taking one of these blue chip receivers, I'll get on board with that real quick and I'll think about the cost of it when we get to next off season and we're working with limited resources but for me this is kind of just I was listening to Locked on Bills with Joe Marino he had Chris Trapasso on um, his most recent episode just kind of talking about where the Bills are and all that and and it's a sentiment that I've kind of had myself in go ahead and listen to the episode Chris Trapasso says it much better than I um, ever will but just kind of looking at this offseason and where the Bills are headed it seems like Bean has kept the unit together, you know, kind of pushed the chips in on all these these players that we've had, um, and we weren't able to get over the hump. And this offseason has been kind of, let's take some medicine on money, let's reset things. I think Diggs got added into the mix early due to other circumstances that we may or may not ever hear about. But I think that time just came to its end. And I think he would, the intention was for him to be around one more year, he swallow some of his money next year. But things changed, obviously, and here we are. Um, so my issue with this strategy for the draft is the amount that you're giving up for a non-quarterback pick and looking at how many positions that we're trying to reset and be able to reset money on it. Even if we get into the top 10 to take a receiver, I think before the Diggs trade happened, we already had a need at receiver with Gabe Davis walking. And yes, we brought in Curtis Samuel, but with Diggs on the roster, I still wanted a receiver draft pick to kind of slot in for Gabe Davis, maybe year one. Curtis Samuel would help bridge that gap, but looking for the the heir to the Stefan Diggs role. So now not only do I still want to select that that player, but I think there's a need for two receivers in the draft now. Um, and the way I see this kind of building out is I see my take on it would be Bean's philosophy being more of like um, kind of a trend we've been seeing in the NFL where teams are willing to ship off these these top alpha receivers and kind of build out the room with like three or four receivers that are, you know, like a one B or a two A type receiver and just kind of having talent all all around the field. And this is a trend that I could see continuing in the NFL. Not that these blue chip guys aren't going to be taken, but when you look at some of these contracts that are coming up, these receivers are going to start getting, 30 plus million dollars a year and on if you're on a team that has the franchise quarterback that you have to pay um now you have to pay your alpha top receiver you're talking you know 80 million dollars in cap space tied up between two players um with the cap right now sitting like 250 i know it's going to go up but you're, you're still talking a third quarter of the salary cap tied up in two guys when you still have to field 50 more players on the roster. Um, I think these blue chip guys kind of make more sense if you have that quarterback on a rookie deal or you kind of have a middle-of-the-road quarterback that's not going to get huge money. I think with how many positions we're resetting on this roster, talked earlier about our our need at defensive end, Um, well, that becomes even bigger next year. I just think that this is, while it would be super fun, just not a great use of resources um, looking at what team needs will be going forward. Um, 
like I said, this kind of started the drift before I got a chance to pause it when I was working that trade in there. Um, the first thing we see here when I talk about, you know, mock drafts being kind of wild and random is um, offensive tackle going second to Washington, not a quarterback. Um, that's something that I don't see happening in the actual draft. Um, but also, if it did happen, we're still going to get these quarterback picks in here. Somebody's going to move up for a quarterback. All those things that happen, um, this only stands to kind of push talent down the board, which might make a guy like Brian Thomas Jr. accessible in, you know, like the late teens. And um, if we start getting in a scenario where we're talking about trading up to, you know, the late teens, early 20s, and the, the cost to come up is a bit different, um, fully different conversation I'm willing to have. But the the getting into the top 10, not something that I would be doing if I was um, taking the reins. We got Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr. going there. And this draft for me is already cooked from the start, just with the idea that the plan was to get into the top 10 for one of the big three, hoping for Roma Dunze. Obviously, this kind of plays out differently in a real draft scenario um, where you wouldn't necessarily, you know, fully commit to that trading up prospect um, unless the prospect is there. This is going to be a scenario where I would just go ahead and take Brian Thomas Jr. Might try to run through this scenario again just because I've, I've never... I've done this scenario quite a few times and I've never really seen it play out with tackles going before the quarterbacks, whatever. If this was a scenario where we had traded up, I I would be looking to trade down right away um, and get into the 20s here, but kind of a risk that you take. So Brian Thomas Jr. will be the pick here. And while we're kind of going through the picks here, I'll also say that as much as I think wide receiver is a huge need on this team, I think positions in this draft, particularly um, the edge position, once you kind of get out of the first round, there's a huge drop off in talent. And I think as much as it might pain us, I have mentally prepared myself for the possibility of edge being the first round pick here when you have a wide receiver draft that's as deep as this one there's tons of options there's tons of players that could fit um it would just be a scenario where i wouldn't at all be surprised if a position like edge where the talent's going to drop off like crazy is where the bills brass decides to go with the first pick and just just looking at this from a logistical standpoint of, you know, how many receivers are left that I would still be happy with. Malachi Corley, Ricky Pearsall, Jalen McMillan, Tez Walker, who um, the Bills have brought in, done several visits with. Um, Jermaine Burton, who's a really interesting player who's got some off-the-field stuff going on. Not sure that he would be on the Bills board. But Ricky Pearsall's a guy that I really like. So that would be somebody that I would be comfortable with taking in the second round if we didn't go with the receiver in the first round. But just kind of looking at where we end up with the edge group after that, no names really popping out that would interest me in in the second round. Uh, Marshawn Neeland is somebody that's kind of been jumping up. Defensive tackle, I think, is also a big need for us. Chris Jenkins, Braden Fisk sitting there, probably be about the direction that I would go. I think we do have the defensive tackle position shirt up for this year, Um, but very similar to the edge group. What do we look like in the future? Um, Kind of, we just brought back Daquan Jones. We brought in Austin Johnson. That's a one-year deal, and then the depth just isn't there again. So I'm going to make Chris Jenkins the pick here. And just overall, I come away from, from this scenario feeling, feeling like we gave up 
too much for how many receivers are here that I would be comfortable with. And I'd feel a little bit better about it if everything played out the way I wanted to. And we had Roma Dunze on the roster. Um, but kind of the way these shake out 